Right guys, welcome back to another video today. Um, today I'm going to be carrying on where I left off here, where um, I was showing you the rot in the last video. I've cut loads of it out already, ready to weld the new plates in. I've made the new plates, uh, that's the heel board repair plate, underbody here because I found some works right down here, a closing plate for the side here, uh, and just a little diamond to go in this corner just down here. Uh, making these templates, I literally just used an old Kellogg's cornflakes box and shaped it out. For the heel board, I mirrored it off the other side and checked measurements when I was placing it to make sure it was going to be perfect. And then I've made it to pretty much fit bang on so it'll only go in one place. So that's going to line up perfect. And then I added a few extra holes here so I can weld through the plate and onto the inner sill to make sure it doesn't pull out when it's under load. Um, there won't be any grinding or welding done in the videos. Um, that's why I did this without filming it because I don't really want to wreck my expensive camera gear. But in between welding and grinding I'll give you a few shots here and there. Um, that's all, so I'll jump straight into doing some more work on it. Right, so this is as far as I got up to the heel board repair plate is in, the underplate pockets repair, those patches are in there. And then I started welding the lower plate in here, uh, but I've run out of gas halfway through, so that's, that's that come to a stop. And also, I've had a few of the problems where that supposed restorer who did the repair on this back panel and floor He'd literally just cover this all up in some sort of rubber sealant. So this hasn't rotten any more in the last 10 years, but it has been sealed very well like that. The stuff we had was made out of like this rubber junk here and it's like everywhere, just like it's rubber stuff. So it's crazy. Some of the plates, like these plates here, he quite literally used this rubber stuff and a few pop rivets to hold it in place and to make it look like he put closing plates in. Some of the plates he welded on the floor to make it look like it was welded were, was, was spread with this rubber stuff and then he would leave blobs to create it look like spot welds. It was crazy. Some of the, the effort he'd gone through, it'd probably been easier to weld it, let's be honest. Um, but it's put me at a stop here for now until I order panels to repair this back end. So, um, to make a full video out of this, I'm going to go strip down a radius arm and show you how I've done that um, until I can get the panels arrived for this to finish it off. So, uh, I guess I'll jump straight into that. Right, so here's our radius arm. First, what I'm going to look to do is check my adjusters free here so I can free the drum off. I don't mind a quite well loop, so that's good. Ready to wind it out, so I'll take a few turns off that so the drum slides off it. Next, we'll get this brake line loosened off. I was going to do a video on doing the brake lines for here, but it was cheaper just to buy them. I mean, it was £7 for the full set for the whole rear end, so I just bought them instead. But if people request, I can do a separate video where I show you how to flare the brake lines and an ideal tool to be using for that sort of uh, job. This looks like it was due a good change, it's all seized and it's the old steel lines as opposed to copper. So, good thing I'm going to look at changing them now. When you get these brake lines pretty much out, try to retain the shape as best as possible because you can use that when you get your new one to like try and replicate it again. Uh, next, I will get this old rubber grommet off here. And then this little clip that holds your, retains your slave cylinder in. Get that pop out. Get 
work on the hub side now, separating this up. There'll be one posi here you undo. That's just to stop the drum falling off when you're working with it. And then if I've loosened it enough, it might come out. Nope, not enough. I'll go back to my adjuster. That's that maxed out the adjuster. Plenty of rack you need because it's messy with the uh, radius on grease everywhere. Try and do is get this hub out, and then you might be able to see a bit better. <laughs> Next, uh, we'll take out like this flip in here. Pin out. Right, so when it comes to Doing the hub nut on here. Driver's side is anti clockwise, so it's standard thread, but the passenger side you will find is opposite thread lock, so it's a left hand thread on that. Uh, so as long as you remember that, you can use a buzz gun, otherwise, if you can't remember that, I won't use a buzz gun in case you wreck something up. There it goes. <laughs> And then you'll also find when you come to taking this off, it always happens to me when I do these hooks. They always, yeah, one of them always gets stuck on. Oh, this one's come out perfect. The other hub I did is I get stuck on the spindle. The only way I can get them apart is in the fat chisel between the body and it, popping it out. So that's the hub off now. It stinks because uh, I think this one's actually. Uh, run dry at some point and it's uh, overheated. It's like uh, gone quite black on some of the runners. So, next we'll take the shoes off. Right, so when you're taking the shoes out, if you take a look here, you'll see just here the long stick spring is at the bottom, so it's got the two coils each end. That's on your bottom half, and on the top half, that's where, where the adjuster is, that's where your normal coils being your short one is. Uh, they both go from behind, on your left hand one it's in the slip, the right hand one it's in the hole, and then it's the opposite on the bottom where the handbrake lever is. Now I'm not very good at getting these springs out, but uh, I do my best without hurting myself. Again, another great outcome for the camera, I never heard of it. I'm trying to remember the location, these came out, the same orientation. That way, when it goes back, it doesn't have to bed in again if you are using the same shoes. So I just leave my drum on the floor and I essentially rebuild it in the empty drum. Now your handbrake lever will be free, so you can remove that. Alright, before you can get the Slaves under out, each end with a bleed nipple on it. So, a quarter inch size this is. Uh, on mine, anyway, it depends which aftermarket ones you've got. Um, also, I forgot to say the hub nut for the back here is. Give you a size there in a second. Fifteen and sixteenths is the hub nut on this. Whether if you need to uh, get it out. What's that? Gone. Right. So I remove these cams here. Uh, so 
the cam followers in here and the cam, so they'll come out like that to, to wind it back inwards. So now you'll take that square drive on the back of your handbrake adjuster and wind it inwards uh, as if you were tightening it. Once it comes out, what I'll do is I'll show you how it, how it works. This is the hard bit, just where it becomes level with this vacuum plate here. Sometimes you've got to keep feeding it. I mean, mine are well lubed, but it's still a bit stiff. And then obviously it'll come out like this on this side. You get to put it out. These are common for season. I mean, even mine look a bit crusty at the minute. They could do a bit more lube on them. Um, I always advise packing it before you fix it. And also, when it's full and tightened up, put a load of grease around the back of this plate here just to make sure in the winter weather it's going to keep it lubricated. Now, on these cams, take the glove off and show you. Right. You should be able to see that on this side here it's got a slope, and this side it's got like a 90 degree wedge cut out of it. The 90 degree wedge is what locks into the shoes, and the slope here is what runs on this cam here. So, uh, I'll show you what the cam looks like. That's, that's the cam there. Let me get a bit of rag and clean it up. So when you tighten in these handbrakes, you'll normally find that it feels like they get stiff, then loose, then stiff, then loose. That's because as it winds on the head of it, it's got a cone shape but with four flats on it. A little bit hard to see, but you'll, you can check on like mini spares I mean, of the part. And each flat lands on this cam like this. And as you wind it, it pushes it and then to the next flat. And the reason it's got the flats is to stop it undoing itself or doing itself up even more. It's sort of like a, a locking mechanism in a way for when you set the handbrake. Um, so that's pretty simple how that cam works. Uh, next, I'm going to remove this backing plate and get that off. Right, I'm going to quickly do it with a uh, my impact was going on here. Get these out. Don't forget when you're reassembling that you need to put this handbrake needle cable back in. Uh, obviously, a few people fit it, but then forget about that. Oh, that's that backing plate off completely bare bone now. So, if you are doing this, you could wire brush this down, give it a clean up, which is what I intend to do with it. Alright, one more thing I want to do now that's all apart, put this hub nut back on here. Remember what it was with a socket 15 16 uh, Let's see if we can get the ray, uh, the quadrants out. These are normally really hard. I always have trouble trying to get these out. So, mine are very under all of this. The hardest part you'll find is trying to get the little split pin out that's been there for years. I mean, look at that, all that really spilled up. <laughs> I'm going to try and saw the back end of the split pin off because it's so mangled. Alright, so I snapped the split pin off there, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and just shock it to try and get this pin to loosen itself up for the uh, quadrant. It's popped there. So these are hollow these radius arms, so the only place they tend to get stuck is on this top edge here and the lower face from just like general rot and crust. Uh, I'm using a quarter inch punch, just carefully line it up. I take my time running it through because I want to catch the radius arm and crack it. I'm going to pull that spin out of there and that's the radius arm out. Sorry, the quadrant out. Uh, all these are for is to literally guard your handbrake cable to bring it round uh, to meet the back of the handbrake lever on the drum itself. Right, final bit is literally the master pin on here. So we'll just undo one of these, one of this, and then as long as it's well looped, it should, I say a little resistance when I come out. Right, that's the pin out. You can see mine's got a bit too brown because it must have had some water getting it and also this pin, right, my rag, 
I'll put that on and show you. Um, this one was seized fully in there uh, a few years ago when I tried to take it out. And I managed to get it out and at the time I didn't have the money to replace it or repair it so I just a bit of sandpaper and cloth it in it out. But that's the actual finish on the rod. It's just rusty and crusty and manky and it's pitted everywhere on it. And this side it's got like burn marks where the roller burn it, uh, roller burns like on overheated bonded in. This side here is literally the bush is worn through the pin, the brass bush and it's knackered. I try and put some photos down the Instagram so you can see how bad the pins are. Now I was gonna show you how to remove these bearings, but it turns out I've, I've lost the kit lens it or somewhere somewhere else and I don't have it. So um, unless I find that kit again. Uh, I probably won't show you how to remove these bearings, but I have a couple of friends in garages that will just remove them for me. Uh, so normally the blind extractor to remove these bearings, and I did have one, don't where it's gone. Uh, but pressing them in, I'm going to literally just use a threaded bar on it and wind them in. That's, that's how I'm going to intend to get them back in there again. Um, but that's all for this video. Now you can have to strip it down. I'll do a rebuild on it again. This is mainly for one of my friends who want to see the radius arm dismount and rebuild. Um, so, catch you next video guys. Bye.